Alexander, the Earl Sterling, uh, with Dr. Bill Deagle and the Nutramedical Report. Dr. Bill will be right back. Uh, some of the headlines that uh, we're working on today. The P5 plus one uh, negotiations with Iran, uh, they have, uh, and it's, this is something I think very positive, the uh, uh, Iranians and the major powers have agreed to continue the discussions uh, June 18th and 19th in Moscow. So uh, that's a positive note. Of course, Israel, uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, is uh, demanding that uh, Iran uh, cease all uh, low-level enrichment and uh, is threatening uh, a military option again. Are you exactly. back, Dr. Bill? I am in ba- indeed back, yes. Uh, okay, for, you be back. I'm glad you have my co-host uh, on the third hour on Thursdays and popping in with emergency reports. By the way, if you hear a report that Tim is popping in, it's not good news. It's always bad. Well, we had, we had positive Unless news. Unless someday you the- pop in and say, Jesus Christ has arrived, that'll be good news. <laughs> <laughs> well, that will be good news. Um, but I think we all know it. Uh, no. Iran and uh, the P5 plus one major powers have uh, can, have agreed to meet again next month, June 18th and 19th in Moscow. So uh, that uh, is rather positive. Uh, Israel, of course, is threatening uh, this, this, the military option. But anyway, yeah, scenario, I, I, scenario I mentioned, in other words, is what is happening, which is we're not going to have an attack on Iran, which I've been saying all along. We're going to have an outbreak of peace, not war. The thing that's going to really start melting things down is the meltdown of the economy in Europe and the meltdown of Fukushima, which is getting closer and closer to a disaster that even the idiot, uh, lame brain media can't cover up anymore. Yeah, well, I I think the globalist, um, the, the way they're rolling this out, and all of these things are interconnected, this is... Le- all part of their end game strategy for creating their new world order, their global satanic slave state, and eliminating most of us sheeple. Um, yeah. I, I don't think they want to see Israel blamed for the economic crash that's coming. I think they want uh, the euro uh, to be blamed for it. And um, Fukushima will probably, uh, you know, we we don't exactly know when that will happen. Uh, by the way, a, a U.S. Navy nuclear submarine, uh, the USS Miami, uh, in port in the state of Maine has had a, uh, a major fire. It took several hours to put it out. Seven people have been injured. Uh, no reports of radiation uh, leakage. Yeah, I got a report um, from Ann Morrison on that. I agree. It, it's been yeah, that's rate. where that's where I, I would. Uh, and uh, by the way, I think that the other issue that's going to be a wild card in this is whether they're going to strike in Arizona, Obama from the uh, voter rolls, and I think he actually is going to be struck. I, I, I think Obama is well, going down so. in flames. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, there are a couple major theories uh, about. Uh, who he really is. One has to do with, uh, uh, you know, he was actually born in Indonesia. Uh, I talked to Kenya. Jerome Corsi before he went to uh, Kenya and afterwards, and he was attacked by Odinga, that's Obama's cousin. Jerome Corsi, who was a in the State Department at the time, all going back with multiple presidents, traveled over to Kenya and even interviewed not only his family members, but they literally were saying this is a hot spot for all the birthplace of the U.S. president. And he even met he even met Obama's grandmother, who told him how, she, how proud she was of her, her, her grandson, who is now the U.S. president, because she was outside the delivery room at the hospital in Mombasa, Kenya. Well, what other, who other he is, uh, he wasn't born in the United States. And uh, I don't believe that a white man could have got by with that. I think, uh, and, and I voted for the man. Uh, normally, I vote third party simply because I can't stand either one. I knew he was full of it. Uh, I listened to him, listened to his wife. His wife actually impressed me more than he. 
Uh, he did. I knew, I, I knew he was an empty suit. But I thought, well, I'll always throw my vote away. This time I'll vote for one of them. And it was kind of guilt over how the black people have been so mistreated, uh, were enslaved and so forth. Uh, and, you know, people have given him a, a, a ride on this. Uh, I just spoke today to a, a good friend of mine, a black woman who's uh, been in D.C. at the at a conference for whistle, U.S. government whistleblowers. And uh, I said to her, you know, uh, Obama has done so many things that uh, if uh, that the uh, liberal progressive wing have allowed him to get by with that uh, if George Bush or someone else had had tried that, uh, there's no way. And she said, well, that that's been said many times here. Um, and, In other words, and he got away with true. harming the blacks. The unemployment rate has gone uh, higher. And the country, the and, and the country are, as a whole, you know. Yeah, the I mean, uh, so much of what the, they've done is is so fascist, and yet many of these uh, uh, the liberals are just uh, zipping their mouths shut because. Uh, well, I don't think you know, he's supposedly a liberal I, and he's black I, and so forth. Well, it's I want to I want to I want to call on the black pastors that are listening to this. That first off, if you're a Christian, you can't vote for Obama. Once caught, blame on you. Okay. Well, second time, this is, there's not going to be any grace here. So I'm sure that. You can't vote there for Obama. You might say, well, we can't have a, a Mormon president. Well, I'll tell you what, I'd rather have a Mormon president with a dozen ch choke chains around his darn Mormon neck uh, from conservative right Christians than have Obama back for another term. Well, I won't vote for And by the way, that, one of those longest chains should be from Ron Paul, who wants the libertarian, some libertarian things I totally agree with. And that's one of the reasons, one of the reasons that tells me that the globalists absolutely don't want Ron Paul to get any traction is not because he's going to be president, because they don't want his ideas that we need to literally repatriate cash back here so we don't create credit for anybody else in the world. Number two, we bring back business to America. We stop being involved in foreign wars and promulgating so-called peace on Earth. We're not bringing peace. We're just bringing more death and destruction on our head. Yeah, I think it's. I think Ron Paul is going to pull a bit of a surprise uh, at the convention. I, I don't think that he will be nominated. But, I think he'll uh, change the party, the party policy and uh, many candidates that are libertarian or have libertarian ideas. And again, I don't agree with everything because I don't think states' rights should determine whether abortion is illegal in that state. And number two, I think that we should have a social safety net, but that happens because he agrees with me on the same principles from the American Association of Physicians and Surgeons that the same Rand Paul, we all belong to the same organization, we need to have a system where health care is private, it's personal, and it's affordable. We don't want government meddling into health care. It's sickening, it's dangerous. And we talked about this in the first hour with Mike Villardi, and we even quoted the actual section of the bill. In the, I can actually quote it again. I'm going to pull it up here. It says, Obamacare, Class 2, Part 1, Section B, page 1004, data in the chips. The actual page 1004? 1004. Oh, it talks about the data in the chips and the implantable microchips we want to do at birth or in adults. That means mandatory oh, vaccinations. that's Mark of the Beast. That's right exactly. out of the Bible, folks. Now, if you don't uh, think that we have Natural News a, has yeah. a, uh, a breaking news story. U.S. Senator Rand Paul, that's uh, uh, Ron Paul's son, uh, offers a surprise amendment to rein in FDA abuses, disarm the FDA, and, and decriminalize free speech. Uh, the FDA, of course, which is uh, under the control of Big Pharma, has now uh, evolved into a gun totaling, gun carrying, uh, badge carrying, uh, uh, one more uh, of dozens of such organizations in the federal government, and they've raided people that uh, are, are doing the horrific crimes of drinking raw milk and uh, taking vitamin supplements and, you know, all these really horrible things. Um, and Ron Paul says enough is enough, and uh, we we need to uh, put an end to it. So I think that's very positive. Uh, that's twice I've said things positive because I'm, I seem to be known as Mr. Doom, doom and Gloom on, on here. We'll be back in a minute. So you, right? you, want it to, you want it to be well liked. Well, they like you. They like you. Just you're, They don't want to do it. But, you know, our God is God. We'll be back in a moment.
a question. I want to ask you two questions. Uh, and, and these are kind of, you know, loaded answers, obviously. TEPCO estimates how much cesium-137 released from Fukushima. How much? Well, it's several this times. Is this, is only, this is TEPCO, by the way. Oh, Tep- to, oh well, yeah. they, they lie every time they open their mouth. Who knows? But, but, they're, but they're still saying it's 360,000 terabecquerels or only four times Chernobyl's 85,000 terabecquerels. The actual fact is it's somewhere around... Six to 100,000 times that. That's the actual fact. We're going to talk about that today with Chris Harris at the bottom of the hour. And, of course, Fukushima 4 is especially vulnerable. What it's going to do, it's going to make the whole site so radioactive that nobody can work there because the real danger is not Reactor 4. That's really bad. But the really, really bad reactor is the MOX Reactor 3. So that's well, what I'm I, mean, I, I, I have to disagree with you. I think the real danger are the fuel, fuel storage by, pools. I no, no, wait, here, 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 let, let me explain. It's just a matter of slant, okay? When the site gets so radioactive, you can't do anything. You can't do anything. Wow. And it's really, really bad. But what happens is MOX reactor number three is where all the MOX mixed with oxygen plutonium pellets. So, in other words, it's like, it's like being incinerated. And then, and, then, and then, of course, the next step is to have your atoms literally crush right down to <laughs> subatomic particles. Okay, so I know. I'm just being sarcastic uh, before, here. Before I run out of time, I, I want to comment on the Quebec student strike. Now, you know, I've, yeah. I've, I've claimed the uh, Earldom of Sterling, a Viscounty of Canada, and so forth, a, a bunch of old uh, titles in my clan. Uh, set in the House of Lords, had a big guy, was one of the key people behind the scenes that helped to force Tony Blair. Uh, out of office because they wanted a big, uh, shall we say, donation. Uh, and uh, anyway, <laughs> okay. Now, uh, the first Earl Sterling, Sir William Alexander, was the uh, ministry was the founder in the early 1600s of English-speaking Canada, and he actually had a copy of the original patent to him. Uh, he owned Canada from the islands offshore in the Atlantic to the islands offshore in the Pacific down to that land held by the King of Spain known as California. So it included some American states. But anyway, it was a long time ago. But linked to the title Earl Sterling are these hereditary and totally honorific Canadian offices of state. Governor and Lord Lieutenant of Canada, Lord Lieutenant of Nova Scotia, Lord High Admiral of Nova Scotia, and so forth. Um, so normally Normally on my side and on here, I refrain as a matter of courtesy to the Canadian Crown from commenting on Canadian politics. But there's been something going on in Quebec that I think is just absolutely outrageous, and I'm not going to stay silent about it anymore. Uh, the Quebec students have been striking for just over 100 days now. Uh, they, austerity, of course, uh, once again is, uh, is a key cause. They have wanted to increase tuition fees by about 80-some percent. And, uh, you know, needless to say, the students are, are up in arms. They don't have that extra money, the, the global depression going on. Um, and the fascists in the uh, Quebec uh, natural, uh, National Assembly, as they call their their uh, uh, regional parliament, their um, uh, provincial parliament, um, have instituted a law. Uh, I'm trying to remember what the bill um, 88 or something like that, uh, and essentially. It is a very, uh, I'm sorry, Bill 78. Uh, it's an emergency legislation that they pushed through last week, and they're trying to suppress the province-wide student strike. Now, students, and in, in many cases faculty, have been on strike, and they've been peaceful and taking to the streets uh, all over Quebec. And uh, now, uh, basically, they, you have to notify the police hours in advance of any demonstration, and the police can change anything about where your demonstration is going to be held, et cetera, et cetera. And the people have said, no, this is, you know, you've done something that's just as outrageous as, as the, uh, the tuition increase. You've tried to take our rights away, and, uh, you, you know, you've, you, this, this is Canada. This isn't uh, Nazi Germany. It's not Soviet Russia uh, or communist China. This is Canada, and we have rights as Canadians, traditional rights, to demonstrate and to express our opinion. And uh, the uh, liberal government in Quebec uh, doesn't seem to think so. 
Well, it's happening and, everywhere. Uh, All governments. Arrested we're arrested over governments 700 yesterday. We're, over we're 700 having, uh, Canadian protesters. But, you see, we're having governments of every stripe do things to their populations that's been ex- it was un- unacceptable even a year or two ago. Oh, absolutely. And same with Russia. Growing after fashion. after the election of Mr. Putin, I called the selection because he did a lot of funky things with the, with the electorate, and he probably did win a majority after also crushing his the uh, playing with the vote as well. I'm sure the election hit was some manipulation, but uh, he raised the f- the fine for anybody protesting illegally six hundred times, and the yeah, sentences outrageous. for jail and the sentences for jail for just you know ticking off the wrong officials. You're going to the NKVD. We shall hank you by your nails. We Maybe. will give you a very unpleasant time. You know, all this yeah, all that's going to happen. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it, the situation is, is worldwide. The same thing as austerity going on in Europe. The officials, which are bankers, basically, or whatever government, whether it's the Canadian government that calls them socialist, left, right, conservative, they're asking to do things to the populations everywhere that no one, no decent person, uh, say a decade ago, would even consider it. Absolutely. Uh, a good friend of mine just got back from uh, uh, Greece, and he says the people are absolutely livid, although the people are, are, are generally peaceful. Uh, I said, how, you know, how soon do you think they're going to a- go into an actual revolution? He said, well, the people have a tradition of, of peaceful uh, behavior, but, uh, you know, they're getting pretty fed up. I mean, they, they know what's happening. And uh, there are about 13,000, just linked the story on my blog, Europe Today, there are about 13,000 homeless people now in Athens. Uh, a 60-year-old man and his uh, 80-some-year-old mother jumped to their deaths uh, because they, they literally had no money to eat. Um, this is all being done and orchestrated by people who literally are multi-trillionaires. Uh, the tiny global banking cartel family, the, the super hyper elite of the world, who are satanic to the core, who have made their power and wealth off of basically counterfeiting um, and uh, getting the governments to accept their counterfeit currency that is created from nothing and then to pay it back with interest. Uh, and also, of course, uh, creating wars and economic recessions and depressions and booms and busts so that they can profit from it at the expense of the people of the planet. And they are the ones that are pushing for World War III because they've always used war, and particularly major global wars, to uh, further their political and economic and satanic agenda. And, uh, you know, they will... If they're allowed to do what they're going, they want to do, uh, whether it happens tomorrow or several years down the road, they will wipe out uh, most of the human race in the process. Exactly. No, no doubt about it at all. That uh, what we're facing is is not a rehearsal. This is the big show. Oh, absolutely. And our nuclear expert joins the team here, the three-tag team now, Tim Alexander, Chris Harris, our nuclear expert, that's his radio name, and Dr. Bill, the uh, or, or should they call Dr. Pill, a very hard pill to take. In fact, I'm a titanium ball bearing in the candy bowl of life for the New World Order. Hopefully they'll break off some of their nice, sharp, long, fangy teeth. Uh Tell us about what's going on, Chris. Uh, this, this, uh, the more you research this, the more you find more evidence, and you've got stuff to report that no one else has talked about. Let's let's get into it. Okay, Unit Four. You know, we were discussing Unit Four, and that's the uh, all the fuel is from the reactor cores in the spent fuel pool there, which is not a great situation because that's very vulnerable. We know that Unit Four underwent a devastating explosion and is uh, possibly in a state of collapse, even though there was an earthquake there recently. You know, and I'm, I'm pondering over it, and sometimes it takes a long time to, to see other, other, other uh, dots and start connecting them, but Unit 4 is in a precarious situation. I'm thinking, why is this even more precarious? There's got to be something about it. Well, when you refuel a boiling water reactor, 
such as uh, a similar one. I sent you a picture of. You can post that if you wish. About uh, that's an oyster creek, which is very similar to uh, Fukushima. And it's also a BWR one. Uh, if you when you do that, you pull the dry well head. The dry well head is the is actually part of containment. Underneath that, like a Russian doll, like the smaller Russian doll inside of the bigger one, you find the reactor head. You have to pull that off too. They're massive. And they use, they use cranes, which, which, by the way, there is no cranes anymore. It's all, it's all in rubble right now. So you don't even have, you can't even put that back together right now. And around, that explo- exposes something called the refueling bulkhead and bellows. And it's a, it's a thin film of um, stainless steel that's attached from around the reactor flange. And uh, it attaches to the side of the containment. What you do is you fill up that. It's a ring. It's a big ring that fits around it and uh, fits around the flange of the, of the reactor. You fill up the cavity above it, then you pull out this gate. It's called refueling gate. It's a, about a 25-foot long, uh, rectangular, about 6 feet wide, stainless steel. It's a double gate. You pull that out, and now you've connected up your, your refueling pool, the, the spent fuel pool, with this cavity. And what happens is you could safely move fuel with a manipulator crane between the reactor and the, and the uh, spent fuel pool and vice versa because it's always submerged. You've always got it down deep and, and, you, and you won't get overexposed by doing that. But what you also have is a very, this is not meant, that seal is not really meant to endure long term over a year of, of holding up uh, all that water. And that's, that's just for refueling. You, you, you go ahead and you fill it up, you get your job done, then you put your gate back in again, you seal off the fuel pool, and now you go ahead and now you can drain down that cavity above it. Well, this thing's been shaken and, 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 and is corroding, and there's this, this thin film, this, this thing called a, the, the, uh, the refueling bulkhead and bells. It really is like a little bellows that goes around it. And it's, it's I'm, I'm looking right at the on. picture you sent us, Chris. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it's, it's, uh, that's, I mean, that's pretty that's scary. Achilles, that's an Achilles heel. I mean, right there, and nobody else is talking about that. And, and and we're talking about the whole fuel pool having to collapse and everything else, which gives us a possibility. I'm thinking, you know, I keep on thinking, what? Why? Why is that? Why? Why is that even unnecessary? Because I think it's even more vulnerable than we think. And you see that little, that little, that that, that line that represents a ring around the whole thing. And there have been problems with that. In the past, uh, with them leaking. So if it if goes, that, basically, all the water in the pool goes basically all at once. Yeah, right? if it go down. You'll even make a whirlpool as it's going down into the uh, right down into the bottom of containment into the dry well. Yep. Yeah. In and, other words, there's a structural design that uh, that doesn't that allows this literally thing to completely blow. Has this already happened in some of the reactors, like reactor number one? Uh, what What about reactor three, which is a MOX reactor? I think that one's the I call it the mother load. I mean, the pool, cooling pool number four is going to fall and make it so dangerous nobody can go in there and work. But the It may make it so dangerous that you can't even get to Unit 3. Right. Unit 3 is where the mother load of really bad stuff, the plutonium, is, which is literally 40,000 times more dangerous than uh, even uranium or the other isotopes. Right. There'll be so much shine coming out of Unit 4 that you probably can't even access Unit 3 if you had to do something there in an emergency. So... That that is the uh, you know one one affects the other. I mean, there's really no there's no installed shielding between the two. And if, and if we have a big problem in Unit Four, well, that would be a that would be. And we've already discussed if you lose coolant, and then you also you get heating, and then you get uh, fuel damage, and uh, and every everything else. But I'm looking at that refueling seal right now as a new Achilles heel that needs to be addressed somehow, and they need to put the gates back in that. And if it goes, it goes all at once. So it it doesn't even take the the dreaded heavy earthquake that they're talking about to trigger this. It could literally go at any time. It may be just corrosion over a period of time. This thing is not meant to handle all that uh, water for that long, for that length of time, for that duration. That's a job that you... you, you Chris, uh, here's what I always say. The three-ton flaming pink elephant in the living room is the question, why? Why has really nothing been done over, over a year now to, to at least rectify to the point of, uh, of, of making this not a, uh, literally a human life extinction event threatening uh, thing? 
something to stabilize it. Basically, all they've done is shovel manure up in the air. Um, it's amazing. Isn't I think it? that's a the, that's a kind of the key key question here. We've had over a year. They've done nothing. Well, somehow they need to put they need to isolate the fuel pool on Unit Four at least, and then on 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 the other ones. You know, the Achilles heel gets pushed back. The uh, the fuel pool and and Tim, I did hear your comments about that you were very concerned about the uh, fuel pools and so am I. If uh, if that is not the Achilles heel because that the cavity, the, the gates are already installed in the other units because they were under power, the gate itself, the, the sliding gate can leak too. They're just rubber seals. And that is also a concern of mine too. So so unit four would be that bellows or that refueling seal and around the around the reactor flange. And on the other ones, if you're gonna talk about these spent fuel pools, then it's the gates themselves would be the weakest link. And that that's in my my opinion. So what do we do about that? What do we do about Unit 4? There's no crane anymore because the superstructure is all, that's where the crane is attached to. That's what suspends the crane. Uh, that's what lifts that big, long, heavy gate out. It's like a dam. And uh, you can't put that dam back in again because there's no device to do it. So somehow they have to come up with another makeshift, flimsy kind of system that that could do that and clear enough of the debris out of the way. We don't even know how bad the fuel is damaged because things have fallen on top of it, you know, even though the, they're in racks. There's probably like nine uh, pretty beefy uh, racks, and these are sitting in there. That, that doesn't stop stuff from falling in on it, like, like the girders that have already that we've seen the, the big pictures of. So there, there's, in my opinion, there's no doubt that some of the fuel, at least some of it, has well, been damaged. Know- I, I, I've been in aviation, and I know something about remotely piloted uh, helicopters and vehicles. And it is possible to to turn a very heavy lift helicopter into a remotely piloted very heavy lift helicopter. And uh, uh, you know, if it's too dangerous to put a flight crew overhead. Uh, you can put the helicopter in. You may have to harden some electronics. We well, can but, harden them with uh, a ferromagnetic ship. We already know that. We can put Faraday cages around. Yeah, I know. We can put it. We can actually line the uh, inside of the cockpit or the electronics things with depleted uranium because the thing that fries the electronics is gamma rays. And if you can actually put DU around it, the DU will actually absorb the gamma rays, and the electronics will be hardened with a ferromagnetic I triple problem E chips from Atmel Corporation. Because EMP and gamma rays have the same effects as microchips. Well, the point is, they haven't done anything. Well, the fact is, see, this is a real big question. A lot of people can say, well, I don't believe this, or I don't believe that, or that's a theory, you know, Tim Alexander or Chris Harris or Deagle. The fact is, they've done nothing. So nobody can argue the fact that, oh, they should have done something. I mean, put a, put a tent over the thing at least. Try to filter out the air, even if you do a very bad job. Do something. Put a seawall up. Anything. They've done nothing. They even go home on the weekend. You know what they do on the weekend with at TEPCO? They go home. <laughs> they go home. It's hard to believe. Eight, five. <laughs> back, in a, back in a moment. other stories I want to throw out there that tie in with this. We have, uh, this is what I call the, the most likely scenario, not necessarily the only one or prophetic. But I think that they probably are not going to have a zirconium fire. I know that uh, uh, Gunderson has stated that he thinks it's going to happen. Firstly, I think the pool is already getting hotter, but I think it's most likely new, neutron annealing will cause the tower to fall over probably in the next two months. When that happens, it's panic city. They won't be able to get in within a half a mile of this facility. And what it'll mean is they can't get in there to put tents over it to do anything. The only thing they'll be able to do something like what you mentioned, Tim, is to actually get a hardened helicopter and start uh, either putting, dropping a tent over the facility and trying to do something at a distance. Or dropping concrete. Having, no, they can't drop concrete. Uh, th- this is a different thing. See, what happened with Chernobyl is that the, the corium was actually blown apart, so it didn't reach critical mass. What uh-huh. happens in this is it melted together into a giant thing we call lava lamp. And now and it's probably 60, plug 60, over it won't help 60, it. We'll 60, 60 to 100 meters heat. below, 60 to 100 meters below the the actual ground level of the reactor core. And what's happening is when this cooling pool falls over, it's a massive increase in that. So what'll happen is there'll be no work there. 
the what's probably going to happen is we call hydrovolcanic explosions, which means that big burp of radioiodine that was reported on Alexander Higgins' website. I did some research and talked to Teresa Pantanella last night, who's been on our show, wrote, you know, American Chernobyl, Millions Will Die book for the Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. And here's what I think will happen. We're going to get burps, but we're not going to get a report because the EPA, the International Atomic Energy Commission, the CDC, nobody's recording, you know, uh, air sampling at different altitudes and not recording and giving us real-life models of what's hitting the coast, Midwest, and the East Coast or over in, in Oh, in I Europe. bet they're recording it. They're just not acknowledging it or releasing it. Yeah, if they have any data, which I think is probably very spotty, they're not recording. They're not reporting to us. It's going to higher-ups. The fact is that we have these... Uh, stewards and stewardesses that are not getting bad dry cleaning, that, that's why their hair is falling out and they're getting sores. They probably went back and forth through a bunch of radiation plumes from Fukushima. And people should also be aware it doesn't there, all oh, those poor people in America, no, no, it can go over the pole and go directly to Europe and Asia and Russia. People don't realize if you want to, if you want to get from point A to point B, the closest point to get to England is not to go through North America and Canada, it's to go over the pole. And the wind currents will often do that as well which is why most likely a lot of the radiation isn't going to necessarily cross over and just impinge and hit California. It's going to go over the pole, and it's going to land in central Russia. It's going to land in eastern Europe. It's going to land anywhere, even including even the Middle East. So, yes, some of it's going to hit here. It also is going to go to altitudes, and it won't come down sometimes for years when it comes down in rain. So it's also going to spread out called a laminar flow at 70,000, 80,000 feet, and it'll stay there for decades. We have radioisotopes that the nuclear experts that I've talked to have told me, as I've been up there since the Second World War, so if you want to actually test the radioisotopes in a person, let's say you're exposed to radiation, you have to use battleship steel from before the tests in a bikini atoll. And if you don't have battleship steel, which they have at the facility at the University of Utah, you can't make a device for detecting uh, radioisotopes present in that person. So... Uh, so we, that, we have the, also that, the thing called the Law of the Seas Treaty that's supposed to come in. It's called the Lost Treaty. Isn't that something? That's an interesting name. Uh, we've got <laughs> we, we've got the Canadian healthcare system melting down. Now they're saying they're going to put in a new rewriting healthcare. Well, social healthcare is eugenic care, okay? It's perverse. That's what it is. Okay, I've seen it. I worked in it. It's perverse. Anybody who says that universal health care is great, you're a nut. You're stupid. And I call it hang me on medicine at the speed of light. If you need innovative care, advanced care, whatever, you're screwed. Okay? Uh, they kill people regularly. Euthanasia is a standard procedure, and they want you to just accept it's time to kill mom or dad or grandpa. Okay? That's the way it is. That's Canadian health care. If you want to argue with me, you're going to lose the argument, and you're going to have to be left with a few good whooping marks on your on your intellect after I have a chance to have a shot at you. The next thing is a NATO missile shield. We have to realize the Russians are not our friends. Okay? I applaud the fact that we're putting up this missile shield, but the Russians need to have a little bit more leaked information that no matter what they do, including their advanced Topol M missiles, they're arming to the, to the teeth the Chinese and the Muslims. And the, the Russians are not to be trusted. They are not to be trusted at all. And I don't trust Mr. Putin when he puts this kind of, as soon as he steals the election, the fines up 600%, we have to realize 50% of the army of Russia are Muslim. Okay, so let's get a reality check here. The Russians aren't our buddies. Yeah, the really dangerous ones are the uh, the Mongolian, uh, well, those, uh, yeah, well, outer Mongolian and, and so forth, the far Asian ones, because they, they have a, a very brutal... Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess the, according to John Moore and uh, these other experts that have contacted us, the large number, I'm going to say, I'm not sure how large it is, but it's in the tens of thousands of these so-called Russian special spitznot special forces troops are over here in America. They're Mongolian Russian Muslims training in American weapons and tactics inside the United States. That's nuts. Like, what the yeah. hell is our government doing? What is our government doing? You people, if if my son is 21 and American would want to go and train, you'd have to go through all kinds of security clearances. You bring in these foreigners that are not even American citizens. You train them on our weapons and tactics. For what purpose? Because they'll shoot at Granny because she won't get in the truck? Because an American Marine won't. An American Marine won't say, that's my somebody's grandmother. I'm not going to shoot at them. By the way, officer, have a nice day. Boom, and he's going to pop them. Okay. <laughs> That's what's going to happen, and that, that's what. By the way, that's what stopped the Vietnam War. That's what stopped the Vietnam War. Those questions. Yeah, people, people don't need realize to be asking those questions. 
What stopped the Vietnam War was when the veterans of the war themselves protested and when they couldn't send in commanders because they got fragged by the junior officers when they sent them in to do something stupid one day and the next day they were supposed to sit around and smoke dope while the Viet Cong were shooting on the other side of the Mekong Delta or across from the river. That's what was going on. So you can't, you start getting what's called a very big dearth of officers when you ask them to do stupid things that are suicidal and your troops say, have a nice day, officer, and they frag him right on the spot. That's what happened. Yeah, I, I was a I was an anti war activist during the Vietnam War because I uh, came to the conclusion that it was all nonsense that we were uh, not fighting it to win and we were just killing our people. And I want to tell you the the most vehemently activist anti war uh, that it was very hard for the rest of us to try to control were the guys that had been there because they they knew from firsthand experience how rotten it was in Vietnam. And, man, you talk about some serious characters, and you're completely right. Uh, we, we got to the point where we were afraid of mass, uh, a massive uh, rebellion in the troops, just like the French did uh, in, in Vietnam. And that's what ended Vietnam. We couldn't keep our army there because we were losing far too many people. Yeah. And... Uh, Exactly. You know, uh, you, you have very evil people manipulating these things. And by the way, the very, very evil people are also going to release a pandemic plague. And I keep repeating this. I presented it five years ago in Los Angeles. A lot of people said, no, no, Daigle, we had uh, John Rappaport, who's been on Alex Jones' show and many other places. No, oh, that's all garbage. It's not going to happen. Look, the globalists are patient. They want plausible deniability. We had three years ago in Eastern Europe, in the Czech Republic, the Baxter Laboratory facility mixed weaponized avian swine, avian, avian flu with the vaccine. So if that had just vaccinated people, we'd have a weaponized H3N2, H5N1 recombinant in those people. They would become test tubes to create a super virus. The fact is, it's only a matter of time before these scientists break down the firewalls. They've now published it. I have another article I posted up just the other day on this. We have plague spreading around. We have 25 babies here, right in California, exposed to TB. We have XMDRPD TB. This is in uh, Sacramento and Solano County, where 25 babies have been exposed to TB in the hospital's neonatal intensive care unit. What about this flesh eating bacteria? It's everywhere. And by the way, it's not just because you go zip lining, it's found in hospitals. It's in. Uh, it's in, uh, you know, gymnasiums. It's in your universities. People don't understand that we're we're literally in a disaster, catastrophe zone. And I, here's what I think will happen: the European economy is going to melt down by this summer. By this time next spring, we will be forced by those so-called new selected president, not elected, but selected president. We'll have to apologize ourselves into the G20, where we're no longer able to create our own cash and credit. We'll at the same time have the increasing meltdown and disaster in Japan where there probably will be at least a partial evacuation, even though they all should be evacuated from the area, because they're all getting significantly more radioactive within hundreds of miles of Tokyo. And here we're gradually slowly being salted, the slow boil. And if you're not taking a radiation kit, if you're not protecting yourself by starting to grow your own food in a greenhouse, if you're not doing things to realize these bioaccumulate and Yes, it's below the threshold where the news media are going to pay attention. It's, oh, that's just exaggeration. As the immune system falls of the population, the chances of a global swine avian plague in the next two years is virtually guaranteed. So that's the convergence. Is I think economic chaos this summer. By next year, probably a G20 world new financial order after they crash the economy, at least for a period of time, a bank holiday and Fukushima in the next 6 to 12 months going nuclear and causing a major environmental disaster in the Pacific Ocean and here all over the world. You better pay attention. That's what's happening in your world. We'll be back tomorrow with Firing Line, getting ready for a great memorial holiday, and on Monday, an expert on PTSD.